This week, we explore the all-new Gone with the Wind exhibit at the Orlando History Center. And then we were there as Clyde and Seymour took Pirate Island one last time at SeaWorld. Plus, we have the latest theme park news, a new giveaway, and more. It's all happening right, right now. now. This week's show is brought to you by Theme Park Connection, where you can find the best in Disney, entertainment, and NASCAR memorabilia. Visit their showroom right here in Orlando or online at themeparkconnection.com. Mouse Fan Travel is our recommended travel agent for theme parks, cruises, and all your destinations. For a free quote with no obligation, visit mousefantravel.com. Undercover Tourist is our preferred supplier of discount tickets to Disney World, Universal, and other attractions. For the best deals and planning tips, go to undercovertourist.com or find them on Facebook and Twitter. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm Banks. And I'm Elisa. Banks, we had a eventful morning today. Quite the eventful morning. If my hair looks a bit wonky, that is because <laughs> about an hour ago it was soaking wet <laughs> from when we did the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge over at Fun Spot America. Yes, indeed. Our producer Matt challenged us. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we decided to take the challenge and make it fun in a new creative way. Mm -hmm. uh, because we love attractions so much. So we actually, at Fun Spot Orlando, we went on White Lightning, the roller coaster, uh, had our bucket of ice and water, and got to see how much fell on us as the roller coaster went along. Try to keep as along. much as we can in the bucket. Yep. Spoiler alert, not much was left after the ride. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the full video over uh, on our YouTube, youtube.com slash attractions magazine. And for our challenge, we're challenging all of you out there, our viewers, to send us your creative ALS Ice Bucket Challenge videos. Definitely, don't forget to keep it creative and email us at info at attractionsmagazine.com and we will show our favorites on next week's episode of the show. Yes, and, and also the ALS Foundation, whether you accept the challenge or not, please feel free to donate to this great cause from a dollar to a hundred dollars every cent counts. Uh, so, so, so please, we, we want to see these videos and, uh, and get out there, have fun, do this. What did you think of the cold water, Lisa? Cold never bothered me anyway. News in the queue. First up this week, SeaWorld has announced their killer whales will receive a new, larger home in all of their parks. Named the Blue World Project, the new habitats will provide state-of-the-art, innovative homes for the killer whales and offer guests unique killer whale encounters. The SeaWorld San Diego environment is expected to open in 2018 with new killer whale homes to follow at SeaWorld Orlando and SeaWorld San Antonio. In San Diego, the new environment is planned to have a total water volume of 10 million gallons with a planned maximum depth of 50 feet and a surface area of nearly 1.5 acres. Wow. wow. The new habitat in Orlando will double in size. Mm -hmm. Shamu Stadium and the Shamu shows will remain. Mm -hmm. No date has been announced for the Orlando opening. Um, well, I actually, I, I read somewhere online that they're, they're thinking that Orlando may open 2019 and San Antonio 2020. So it's like one three year years after in a row. Each other. That's what I think what's what their plan is. Of course, nothing's official, but that's the rumor right now. So I, I would love to see that happen. Absolutely. Um, this, I love this idea. I mean, this this has been years in the planning for SeaWorld. Years from in what the I've making. Heard. Of course, something of this caliber must have been planned for years. Didn't, I'm excited to see it. It's going to be too. beautiful. And the treadmill that the, the, uh, the, the fast, whales will have. The fast water current so that the, they can get exercise in the water going fast and, and, and all that room and the, 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 the beach and the concept art is just gorgeous. It's going to be, I'm, I'm wondering where at the park it's going to go. I was um, wondering that as well. If you, if, um, if you know the layout of SeaWorld Orlando, um, you know the area behind the Shamu Stadium, you know, on the pathway to where you can see Shamu mm -hmm. underwater, there's that small pond there with a fountain. I think it's going to maybe expand into there. Yeah. That's my assumption. Makes sense. So 2018 for San Diego, we're looking forward to seeing this. Now for something you can experience right now, Falcon's Fury has begun soft openings at Busch Gardens. Falcon's Fury has been running for guests lucky enough to be at the park when they happen. Soft openings are unscheduled openings that may end at any time. Mm -hmm. Now originally scheduled to open back in May, Falcon's Fury was pushed back due to a delay in the fabrication of some components for the ride with a new opening set for late this summer. 
There's still no word on an official opening date, but we do expect to hear something later this week. Stay tuned to our Facebook, Twitter and blog to hear when that date is announced. Yes, and I am very, very, very excited for this ride. Sca excited and scared out of my mind. Yep, <laughs> yeah, me too. 335 feet facing straight down. See, this morning you told me that was, you had to tell me that it was higher than the Sky Coaster that we went on, and now I'm just really scared. I guarantee you we're going to get, I hope they do a rider cam for this, because we're going to get us together, and we're going to be crying our eyes out. and <laughs> Just uh, try not to throw up. <laughs> well, if we throw up, they, there's plenty of time for the people down below to get out of the way. That's true. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an awesome ride. Moving over to Universal, they have recently announced that the second annual A Celebration of Harry Potter will be returning to the park next year. Park guests will have the opportunity to experience an expo, attend Q&A sessions with stars from the Harry Potter film series, and more, all included with general park admission. A limited number of special vacation packages, including one for annual pass holders, are on sale now. Mm -hmm. All packages offer hotel accommodations and other exclusive special benefits. A Celebration of Harry Potter will take place January 30th through February 1st, 2015. For more information and to see footage of this year's event, visit our blog. Went to this year's event and we had a segment nice. for the show. I loved it, it was so much fun. Uh, I think Universal, for, for the first year doing the event, they did an excellent job putting it on. Good. I had a great time. I did not go, but I hope to go in 2015. You gotta go. It sounds yeah. awesome. The ho uh, I will say the, the, uh, the special vacation packages, I, I remember last year mm -hmm. they sold out pretty fast, so they're on sale now, but you better go book it quickly because they might sell out very Seems soon. like it's very much worth it too. To, very to do worth that it because I think uh, it includes like a private Q and A session with the stars. That's oh, awesome. Yeah, how great is that? Wow. Um, hopefully the wand dueling comes back because I got to wand duel with the choreographer <laughs> from Order of the Phoenix who oh, yeah. chore choreographed all the fights. You in the learned movie. all the fancy moves. Oh yeah, the the. <laughs> I loved it. It's so much fun. <laughs> now, over to Disney World. Guests riding the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror at Disney's Hollywood Studios have a new way of taking home a memento from their ride aboard the Runaway Elevator. Those who have a magic band and an active Memory Maker PhotoPass package on their My Disney Experience account will receive a short video of their journey into the Twilight Zone. The video is automatically associated with the guest account and any family or friends who are linked will see it as well. Yes, guests can purchase Memory Maker both online or in the parks. If purchased in person at the parks, it's $199. But if you purchase online at the Memory Maker website three days before your vacation, you can save $50. The video itself will come as an MP4 file. Disney has said more experiences are coming soon. I love, I mean, I love Memory Maker. For, for $150 to $200, you get 30 days of unlimited photo Ooh. downloads. That's pretty good, especially for locals. That's awesome. And I love the fact that they're now diving into the video territory because, I mean, Universal, some of their rides, they've been doing video like Rip Ride Rocket and Hulk. They have video available. So this is Disney's first foray into the guest video on rides. And mm -hmm. I love it. My, my favorite ride, I got to get this I immediately. Know, right? That's awesome. I love that. We've never seen videos on rides like Tower of Terror. And the fact that, that guests can take that home with them now and share it so easily, it's, it's wonderful. And it's, it's, it's pr well produced too, because Disney adds graphics and voiceovers oh, and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it looks great. Uh, I, you can see the sample of it on our blog post on, on the Traction Magazine dot com. Mm -hmm. And for a little nostalgic news from Disney, the American Film Institute Showcase and Gift Shop has closed at the Disney Hollywood Studios. They were located at the end of the Studio Backlot Tour and officially closed earlier this week. The collectible merchandise that was once sold inside Sid Cahuengas. Cuengas. 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 At the front of the park moved to this location, but is now no longer available. The backlot tour will not be affected by the closure, and a replacement attraction is in the works. This is kind of bittersweet for me, just because yeah. um, I worked at Hollywood Studios for a year in attractions at backlot tour, so part of my rotation sometimes was to work, uh, be inside the AFI showcase, and and just keep eye and, and pick up trash and stuff like that. So I, I spent a lot of time in there. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of sad to see it go, but at the same time, it's been around for a while and I'm be excited to see what kind of uh, new things new things they'll bring in. If it's going to be movie related or, or what. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was kind of my favorite part of the Backlot Tour. There's always some really cool things to see With in the there. the costume pieces yeah. and everything. Kind of remind me of like Planet Hollywood or something like that. You, you know, that, getting, yeah. getting to see those costumes, but we'll see what they have in store. Exactly. Now, finally this week, the Legoland Hotel is now accepting reservations for their summer 2015 opening. The five-story Lego themed hotel will feature 152 highly themed rooms and suites, along with thousands of Lego models and interactive play areas. Families can choose from one of three popular Lego tour lines as their room theme. Pirate, 
kingdom, or adventure. All rooms include one bedroom with a queen-size bed for grown-ups and a separate sleeping area for up to three little ones, complete with a bunk bed, pull-out trundle bed, and their own TV. I want that. Heck yeah. I want a bunk bed. <laughs> Room rates start as low as $249, varying by season. To book your reservation, visit LegolandHotel.com. I, I'm excited to, see, to check out this hotel. I hope they invite us out to, to see it mm -hmm. when it opens. Um, the fact that this is turning the Legoland Florida, Legoland Florida into a resort. Uh, a multi-day resort now officially called the Legoland Florida Resort. I love that because I the park is really great, especially for kids. And I cannot wait to bring Spencer there. Oh yeah, she's gonna have so much fun. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna raise her on Legos because I was always on Legos. Good. And I'm it's I'm a classic. I'm prepared for the the stray Lego. I'm gonna step on though. Hopefully, there's no stray <laughs> Legos at the hotel. Yeah, you, they'll be nice and smooth. Yeah, it seems like an awesome hotel. I want to go stay there and live there. The themes what, sound what, awesome. What what theme would you choose? Pirates. Pirate. Yeah. I think I choose adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adventures out there. <laughs> Hi, everyone. On the west side of Interstate 4, south of Exit 62, near Celebration, Florida, look for this hidden Mickey. You'll find a huge classic Mickey atop an electrical transmission line pole. You can't miss it, but you got to look for it. Have a good time. Theme Park Connection offers a wide variety of pins, props, figurines, artwork, signs, decor, cast member exclusives, and other one-of-a-kind finds. Looking to sell your old collectibles? Theme Park Connection will buy them from you. Visit their showroom located minutes from Orlando International Airport or find them online at themeparkconnection.com. The Sea Lion and Otter Stadium at SeaWorld Orlando has been home to Clyde and Seymour Take Powered Island for the last 15 years. Now shows of this type typically last for roughly two to three years. The longevity of this particular show speaks volumes about its popularity. But alas, all good things must come to an end and it was recently announced that this show would be closing and a new one would be taking its place next year. We sent Banks out to cover the final showing of Clyde and Seymour Take Powered Island. Now, I know they like to use a lot of bad puns in this show, so mm -hmm. how was this performance? It was pun-ishment. Oy vey. Ahoy, mateys. No, I'm not going to talk like that, don't worry. I'm at SeaWorld Orlando, and this is the final weekend of Clyde and Seymour Take Pirate Island. This show is the longest-running show in SeaWorld history, 15 years that was performed here. Wow. They're going to have a new show coming in 2015, and we're here just to check out all about the show and maybe get a few hints on what's coming next year. Stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is sort of talk about how we train our animals and how we get them to do the things they, that they do in the show. That's one of the questions we always get asked by our guests as they're leaving the stadium or as they're coming into the stadium. Like, how do you get them to do that? Now this sea lion's name is Finch. And he eventually will be playing the part of Clyde and or Seymour. But right now he's learning. This is a target ball. That target is the essential tool for training almost everything here. Uh, any, anything we use, we want to train their name, we want to train them to do an aerial behavior, train them to come to us, whatever. They're going to have to start by learning how to follow a target. Uh, now this is a cool behavior we've just started. It's called a ball balance. Ball balance is a hard behavior to train. Now we do this for our Christmas show and we play with it. Uh, he's learning it. Now again, it's that natural curiosity that sea lions have. So we've kind of taken advantage of that, and so what we do, what we do with this particular behavior is we'll throw the ball in the water, and as we start this process, the very first time the sea lion goes and looks at that ball and actually touches it, makes physical contact, you'll hear Kenny or you'll hear the trainer say, okay. Okay is a verbal, what we call a bridge. Um, it, it, we, we explain it like this, if you're a photographer and you're taking a picture, that moment where that shutter clicks, that's where we use the word okay. So we want it to click in their brain, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. the behavior will get there. So the first thing we do is we teach them to follow that bat, that target in the water, then we, we will actually make it make the back foot motion underwater and it will slowly raise it higher and higher until he literally comes out of the water to do the backflip. Now what you see here 
This is, uh, again, key to our training, and this is a relationship session that Kay's going to do right now. Uh, this particular sea lion did a great job. And one of the things that we have to focus on uh, that, that people don't think about is, you see Kenny come out here, it's very reinforcing for the animals to be out here with us. So a lot of times when we leave, that's a signal that I'm not doing anything else anymore. It's like having to come off the playground. It's like, oh, I don't want to come off the playground. So we, are, we, we use a lot of variability here, and we don't always do the same thing all the time. So I might walk off stage and take him home and put him back in his pool, or like in this case, because he went backstage, because he followed so well, because he had a great session, Kenny said, okay, I'm going to take him back out. So Kenny brought him back out, jumped in the water with him, and now is doing just a nice little relationship session in the water. How long does it take to train the, uh, the otters for the behaviors in this show? That is a really good question. It totally depends on the otter. So each of them has different uh, personalities and strengths, just like any other animal or child. So it's uh, each one poses individual challenges, but sometimes it can take uh, a couple of months to train them any one behavior. And we do have multiple otters, so they can just do one behavior and be the star for just that minute, and then we'll throw in some other stars to fill in the rest of the show. This show has been around for over 15 years. What, what do you think is, makes this show so popular with guests? Well, you know, everybody loves a pirate. And what I mean by that is everybody loves me. <laughs> everybody loves me. But really, more than that, they love the animals, just like we do. We love the animals, and the public loves to see us interacting with the animals, and we love to showcase how amazing the animals are that we have here at SeaWorld and throughout the world, and just show how amazing they are. Do we, uh, do we hope to see, Otter, uh, see Opie or any of the otters come back for the new show next year? Absolutely, we do. We hope that Opie Otter can play just as fun of a role as he does in the pirate show. He's just so adorable. Oh, I love this. <laughs> he likes microphones, yeah. Aww. Go ahead. <laughs> he might want to take a little nip out of it. He's saying come see the new Kai and Seymour show next year. The next time you plan a Disney vacation, book with a travel agency that's been specifically designated as an authorized Disney vacation planner. Unlike some other agencies, many of our agents' exclusive knowledge of Walt Disney World can help you get the most out of your vacation, and the assistance of our travel professionals can help you get a customized Disney vacation that's just right for you, your family, and your budget. Start planning your magical vacation today by visiting mousefantravel.com. Oh, Banks, I feel I might be suffering from a touch of the vapors. The vapors? Yes, well, you see, I've always seen myself as one of those classic southern women. Also, I'm preparing myself to check out the new Gone with the Wind exhibit at the Orlando History Center. Oh, gosh, I've always wanted to do this. Ooh, I'm so sorry, Elisa, but we sent Jessie instead. Banks, Banks, if she goes, what shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a darn. Darn? For a G-rated show. Ah. The Orange County Regional History Center is celebrating the 75th anniversary of Gone with the Wind with a special exhibit. And frankly, my dear, I think we should check it out. Tell us a little bit about how this all got started. Well, gosh, uh, for 22 years, I was the uh, head of uh, hairdressing and makeup departments at Universal Studios. And one afternoon, I was doing some research at Western Costume that created these costumes. 
And I was over there and I saw a dress lying on the floor and I was always taught to be very respectful of property. So I went to pick it up and they said, well, don't bother with that. We're going to be throwing it away. And I thought, well, what a shame. I said, do you think they'd let me buy it? And so she went off to determine a price and she came back and she said, well, we'll sell you this costume and a rack of other costumes for $20. And the jacket had a little label in it that said Selznick International Scarlet and I realized I was holding a costume that had been worn by Vivian Lee and Gone with the Wind and I bought it for 20 bucks. Wow. Wow. That's wonderful. Yeah, you can't even buy anything at Marshall's for $20. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> so how long are you going to be here in, in Orlando? How long can we come and see you? Well, the exhibit opens on August the 16th. And I believe the last day of the exhibit is November the 30th of 2014. Beautiful. Can you show us around a little bit, go it, over the collection? It will be my pleasure. Oh, thank you. Come I'm so on. excited. We'll go see some fun stuff. So we're here in front of the infamous $20 dress. 20 bucks. Can you believe that? But uh, in the film, it actually photographs blue. But through the miracles of uh, Technicolor, you know, Gone with the Wind was only the 11th Technicolor film made. So in Technicolor, gray corduroy photographs as blue. But this is the infamous $20 dress. Oh, it's worth a few dollars more now. <laughs> just a few, right? <laughs> yeah, just a few. It must have been wonderful working in that old Hollywood, the classic Hollywood we all grew up with. <laughs> well, it was fun because I started in the late 50s, and when I would come on the lot every morning, I'd wave, hey, hi, Fred, you know, Fred Astaire. And there'd be, uh, you know, Doris Day, Rock Hudson, you know, Cary Grant. And Hollywood was an exciting place now, or uh, then. But it, it's still exciting, but they don't have the, the stars that they it's used to the have. It's not the same. Those classic, iconic same. stars that will yeah. always define Hollywood. Yeah, I remember once saying hi to Fred Astaire, and he tipped his hat to me, and he was bald. He had that his toupee on. Oh. It was fun. It was, every, every day was interesting. Well, over here we have some of the original artwork that was created for Gone with the Wind. And this, this, this is one of my favorites because it was done by a young lady at the time by the name of Dorothea Holt, who was the first female sketch artist hired in Hollywood. And she did over 1,500 of these original artworks. And when I got this one, this was the first Dorothea Holt I was able to locate. So I, I got it and I immediately called her on the phone. I said, Dorothea, I'd love to bring this down to California to show you. So I hopped on a jet, brought it down. I had it all wrapped up and I, I set it on the table and I unwrapped it for her. Now she was in her 80s at the time. And I held it up and she says, oh, I hate that one. <laughs> My heart just sank and I said, but why do you hate that one so much? She says, well, that was the first out of 1,500 drawings that I had to do. Well, here we have Scarlett's green sprig dress as recreated by Pete Ballard. Now, Pete Ballard is a Renaissance man. I'm not going to tell you how old he is, but he's older than I am. But he makes these wonderful dolls for museums and institutions. And when he heard about my collection and that we were going to be in Raleigh, he donated several of his dolls to the exhibit. And he actually even made a, a new doll for the collection. But here he has recreated the green sprig so perfectly. So these look familiar over there. What can you tell me about those? Well, yes, they are. Uh, this, of course, is Vivian Lee's Academy Award that she won as Best Actress for Gone with the Wind in 1939. And this was won by Arthur Arling. Now, you know, Arthur was the camera operator on Gone with the Wind, which won an Academy Award for Best Cinematography. But his boss picked up the Oscar. Arthur later won his own Oscar for a film that was shot right here in Orlando, or in Florida, I should say, called The Yearling in 1946. Oh. So I was told Arthur, I said, because he was such a good friend of Vivian Lee's, I said, well, wherever I take Vivian, I'm going to take you. Aww, I nice? love that. Would you like to hold the Oscar? Oh my gosh. <laughs> really? Now say, I accept this award. I accept this award. <laughs> Just say, I did it all myself. I did it all myself, <laughs> all myself. My hands are shaking right now. Oh, don't. This is amazing. So what is your favorite piece for the collection? The one that's in my hands right now. <laughs> this is amazing. Well, I don't blame you. Thank and you. if you could add 
anything to this beautiful collection you've shared with us, how would you add? What would I add? Well, a permanent home. But I, I, I hear from other collectors all the time, and they contact me about what they've found, and I'm so excited for them as well. I don't need everything from Gone with the Wind, nor do I want everything from Gone with the Wind, because every one of these items is a separate piece to the puzzle, and you have to let everybody at the table with their piece of the puzzle, so the picture is complete. So, I don't know. These th I don't find these things. These things find me. So if something comes down the road, I'll be happy. If not, I'm happy with what I've got too. This beautiful exhibit is included in admission to the History Center in downtown Orlando until November 30th. Smartphones aren't going anywhere, so you may as well embrace the technology for your next vacation. As we've talked about before on the show, each of the major theme parks and several of the smaller ones offer free Wi-Fi and have their own apps available on the iPhone and Android stores. Download these before you come down and familiarize yourself with their use. They typically have all sorts of park information including maps, wait times, attraction information and more. The official apps for each park are free to download and are only getting better each day, so be sure to add them to your trip planning today. Don't pay full price for your theme park tickets. Undercover Tourist gets tickets straight to your door for less than gate price. All tickets are new, authentic, and backed by one of the best refund policies. Our Disney tickets are RFID and FastPass Plus enabled and can be linked directly to My Disney Experience. Add a car rental and save up to 50% on your vacation package. Find the best day to visit each park and other planning tools at UndercoverTourist.com. Visit UndercoverTourist.com to buy your tickets today. Giveaway time again. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Last week we asked you to leave a comment under our YouTube video, what world record could you break? And last week's winner is Brian Nussbaum, who said he could break the record for watching the most Disney films and TV shows. Mm, fun, congratulations. Indeed. This week we have a prizes brought to you by Theme Park Connection, $25 gift card for Theme Park Connection, as well as a grab bag from Fun Spot America from their 16th, Sweet 16 birthday party. Yes. Lots of fun stuff in here. You got this, these glasses, there's a like hand sanitizer, a whistle. Sunblock. Sunblock, Tons exactly. Of fun stuff. It's a really fun prize pack. You're going to love it. Now, for this week, leave a comment under this episode's post on Facebook at facebook.com slash attractions magazine. Mm -hmm. So, to enter this week's giveaway, find our Facebook page and like it. Then, find the post about this week's episode and leave a comment under it. If you're under 18, please get your parents' permission. Each person will only be entered once, and we need to see your comment by the end of next Tuesday, August 26th. One winner will randomly be chosen among all responders. Good luck. Yes, good luck. Now, uh, we didn't have anything on the calendar for this week, did we? Actually, we did have oh. some last minute additions. Oh, that's right, we did, mm -hmm. yes. First off, we have the O-Town Mackdown at the Orange County Convention Center. It's... <sighs> oh, I love that <laughs> idea. I want to go eat some mac and cheese right now. <laughs> it's an all-you-can-eat macaroni and cheese benefit for Give Kids the World at the Orange County Convention Center. Come on, let's grab our forks. I know, right? Go this. <laughs> we also have the Villains Unleashed special event at Disney's Hollywood Studios. This is your chance to meet and greet with over 50 Disney villains, including some rare and first ever meetings. Mm. We'll be there. Check our website on Sunday for our videos. Both of these events take place on Saturday. For more information, visit our calendar or check out our blog entries about each event. And with that, we want to thank Mouse Fan Travel. Let them plan your next trip, whether by land or sea. For a free quote without obligation, visit MouseFanTravel.com. And much thanks to Theme Park Connection, where you can find the best in Disney, entertainment, and NASCAR memorabilia. Visit the showroom right here in Orlando or online at ThemeParkConnection.com. We are also thankful to Undercover Tourist, our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Orlando and California attractions. For more information, visit UndercoverTourist.com. Remember, you can watch a brand new episode of the show each week. You can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter right here. Also, don't forget AttractionsMagazine.com for news and videos throughout the week. Of course, there's the magazine itself. Subscribe right now before the end of the month to start with our upcoming fall issue dedicated to Diagon Alley. So next week's episode of the show is going to be a fun one. I think it's looking like we're going to get to film on location at the Four Seasons Resort at Walt Disney World. Just opened there. It's a beautiful resort. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited to check it out too. And that's actually, I'm excited because it's going to be your first on location yes, it is. episode. It's going to be great. I love that. Mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope we get a you know, to go, they'll take us to the top of the resort because... Uh, there's a good view up there? Apparently there's a gorgeous view up there. You can, I think you can see all four parks from what they told me. Wow. 
So we got to check that out. Heck yeah. We got to show our viewers next week. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll get our stomachs ready for the O Town Mackdown, too. <sighs> yes, I'm. I'm ready for that. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you'll tune in again next week. Until then, be sure to visit your local attractions, try something new, and stay safe. But most of all, have, have fun. fun. Last week, we asked you to answer this week's question. Looks looking like we're going to get to film on location at the new Four Z's. Four Z's. Four Z's. Four Z's. Four Z's. Four Z's. Do that again. Giveaway time again. Indubiously. Indubiously. Let's start over. <laughs>